Hi there everyone, welcome back to another video now. I thought I'd do another advice video, I've not done one of these for a while, I seem to do one every couple, you know, couple of months. Um, and I thought, you know what, my car's just recently been for MOT, why don't I do a video that talks through everything that you can check just as a normal human being, you don't have to have any mechanical skill whatsoever, just things that you can check pre-MOT to make sure that your cars are going to fail on something stupid, or get stupid advisories and you get charged through the nose. For something you know so small and minute that you could probably just rectify yourself or at least try and get rectified before you take your car to an MOT if it's something that you can't do yourself. Um, everyone's obviously got different different skill sets. But yeah I thought I'd go through a few things. I've, I've wrote like a list if you like of, of things that just came to the top of my head of things that I'd run around my car and I'd check. So let's just jump straight into it but if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing, hit the bell as well so you get notified and share this video with anybody who you know's MOT is coming up or with anybody that could find this particular the video useful without further ado let's jump into it so the things that i'd look at on my car first of all is i would go around and check all the lights i'd put my side lights on run to the front of the car check those put my full beam on run to the front of the car check those put my hazard lights on run around the car check all the hazard lights are all on and, and all you know flick it on and off at the right rate make sure that the side lights on the wings they're, they're on and that they're um, repeating as they should do um, which I've just recently replaced if you're familiar with the channel um, but yeah check the reverse light just putting the car in reverse obviously making sure that the engine's switched off then putting it into reverse making sure that the uh, the reverse lights come on check the fog lights make sure that the rear fog lights come on um, front fog lights if your vehicle has those and just doing a full general check of all the lights including the registration plate lights as well I'd then check the vehicle's horn nice and easy to check you know an audible noise just press press the on the steering wheel or wherever it is in your car if you've got a, uh, a janky race car build run around the tires as well now one thing that you can do with the tires is that you can use a 20 pence piece here in the uk or obviously if you've got a tread depth gauge that's even better it's more accurate but the idea is, is that the lip on the 20 pence piece is exactly 1.6 millimeters and across the center three quarters of the tire you need 1.6 millimeters of tread depth but yeah 1.6 mil across the center three quarters of the tire and use your 20 pence piece to, to get a gauge of how deep your tread is across the center three quarters also checking the tire sidewalls making sure there's no big gashes no big gouges um, there are specific measurements and the MOT, your MOT tester will test you know and, and look at the tire and make sure that the measurements are in tolerance if there are any you know curbs or gashes in the tire sidewalls but it's something that you can check and, and be aware of prior to taking your car for an MOT and if you feel that it looks you know substantial in your eyes take it to a tire garage get their opinion and they will have the same you know measurements if you like the same tolerance as an MOT tester as far as tires are concerned and recommend that your tire gets changed if they feel that it would be an MOT fail or unsafe to drive. Next, check your battery, go under the bonnet, make sure that your battery is tied down. It might sound stupid, but somehow this car, my own car, had a battery fitted at a garage and it's loose, or it was loose. And it's been like that for ages. It's been like that as long as I can remember because I haven't tightened it down. I haven't, you know, checked it or anything like that. And because it's been done at a reputable garage or, a, you know, back, even a back street garage, you would think you'd be able to replace a battery and tie it down correctly, but no. So check that your battery is tied down, that it's not loose. Obviously don't touch the terminals when you're checking the battery, um, but just make sure that the tie down bar that goes across the top of the battery, it should be two 10 mils that hold that bar down. Make sure that they're tight and that it's, it's not loose and not able to move around. The next thing to check in, in my opinion, would be exhaust leaks. Now they are quite easy to, to tell, you know, just from the audible tone that your, your car makes. And normally when your exhaust starts to leak, it does sound a hell of a lot louder compared to what you're used to. If you are unsure, though then the best time of year is to check it during winter and autumn where the the air temperatures you know a lot, a lot cooler the air normally condensates and air will start coming out from those leaks or from those gaps in the exhaust as well as from the rear and it'll be you it'll be quite easy to see in a nice white you know mist coming out of the exhaust with that with that hot air from the engine condensating with the cool air on the outside alternatively you can put your foot on the edge of the exhaust and the back of the exhaust um obviously make sure that you've got a flat uh, a flat base shoe put your, your foot on the exhaust and if it pressurizes nicely then you don't have a problem it's you know it's obviously not got a leak or likewise you should be able to tell from the sound that the car makes the, the difference in the sound that the car makes when you put your foot on the exhaust you should be able to hear it blow quite badly to be fair another thing that you can check very easily just as a, as a normal human being is the seatbelt tensioners now 
you just grab the seatbelt, give it a yank as if you were, you know, in an accident and that was your body pulling the seatbelt to its to its tension. As long as the seatbelt locks and that tensioner does grab the seatbelt and stop it from moving freely, that seatbelt works as it should do. You know, as soon as a, a quick movement is detected on that belt, the seatbelt's locking into place and that tension is working perfectly. That's something that an MOT tester will, will check. They'll plug your seatbelts in, pull it against the, the seatbelt it's, itself as well, the seatbelt plug if you like. They'll pull that, make sure that that's all right. That's something that you can check just as a normal human being and just give them give them all a good a good rag. You know, you're not going to break them because if it was an accident, you'd, you want to make sure that they're working and that's something that an MOT tester would obviously do. Another thing that you want to check is that your wiper blades are obviously intact, that they do clear the screen as well and that you also have screen wash in your car. Making sure that your screen wash is topped up before an MOT is one of the one of the main things that I always do and, and do throughout the winter and, and autumn months. Making sure that the windscreen wipers clear the windscreen effectively though is something that not everybody sort of looks for but it's common sense and you normally think of replacing your wipers once they become too bad. But checking just before an MOT whether it's summer or winter or whenever that's one of the most important things in my opinion and something that they will charge you through the nose for if you don't check and they say it needs two new wipers because they will charge you at you know top rate for those wiper blades throw them on there probably charge you 10 minutes later for doing that and um, it can be quite pricey for something that again you can do yourself something that's a consumable part something that's readily available in your local supermarket so always check that your wiper blades clear the windscreen well and efficiently and check that your water is topped up your, uh, your washer fluid for your windscreen on the subject of your windscreen there are two areas if you like on your windscreen there's section a and section b most you know most common areas of uh, damage if you like on your windscreen so you want to be checking on your window and the section that's right in front of the driver and that's in the 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 stroke if you like of the windscreen wiper that area is area a and that's the most important area as far as an mot test is concerned if there's a chip 10 mil uh, in diameter in that area it will be an instant MOT fail so you probably need to get your, your windscreen either repaired or replaced. All the other areas are areas that are within the wiper stroke but aren't directly in front of the driver and that's area B. Anything that's um, in excess of 40 millimeters in those areas can be an MOT fail as well. Sometimes MOT testers are very sort of strict with these with these measurements and sometimes if they feel so it's open to um it's open to interpretation if they feel that it, it could be you know a weakness to the windscreen if they feel that it could be um, a weak area um or if it's you know too deep of a chip or something along those lines then they may fail the vehicle's um test for the windscreen not being correct and and in fully working condition. So moving on to another visibility sort of area, if you like, of the car, and that would be your wing mirrors. So your wing mirrors, first of all, one, are they there? And two, can you see through them? There's no, you know, you don't get any cracked mirrors or they aren't cracked to the point where they are, um, you know, this is everything's in, in invisible, shall we say, in the mirrors. Those mirrors, obviously, on the left and right hand side of the car, are your primary mirrors and your centre mirror. Um, because vans obviously don't need centre mirrors, that they are redundant if you like, then your centre mirror isn't as important and the law strictly states that you've got to have two mirrors. Um, I believe it's a centre mirror and an offside mirror, you know, bare minimum, um, but if you just have your two exterior mirrors and not the central mirror, I do believe that that will pass an MOT. However, check with your, you know, your local authorities and your MOT test a prior to test if you if you are unsure about that. But yeah, the, the centre mirror obviously isn't required in commercial vehicles and, and vehicles with, you know, with um, solid rear panels for rear doors rather than rear windows being there. So it should apply in a similar way, I believe, to normal cars. And I have seen cars with. Um, a blanking plate on one of the mirrors um, for like you know drag cars that are still road legal and stuff like that and still have to have MOT to compete in their in their area of, uh, of competition so I do know that you can run a car with two mirrors and similarly a motorbike with one mirror another thing that you need to check is engine management lights now this is a more recent change in legislation where engine management lights can lead to a fail on your MOT and it's because that they're concerned that the vehicle will break down and be left at the side of the road in an unsafe area or unsafe position um, vehicles are normally quite good nowadays in the fact that they can limp home and they have a limp home mode all motor manufacturers do have some sort of limp home mode just to get you out of that unsafe spot get you 
home to get you out of out of harm's way that's something that the mot testers look for now is a is an amber light on the dash or a red light obviously would normally be a fail um, unless it is obviously the normal operational red light such as your handbrake light and things like that but they will be checking your car for amber lights for check engine lights to make sure that your vehicle is fully operational and not about to conk out on your way home another thing that you can check under the bonnet again very focused on vehicle reliability is all your fluid levels specifically your brake fluid level now if your brake fluid level is low it's a sealed unit it needs to be um you know it needs to be there it needs to be there so that your brakes function but because it's a sealed unit if it's not there if you are missing some brake fluid from your levels from your minimum and maximum mark it might be because your pads have worn down but if there's a leak in that system then that can be potentially life-threatening in that if you've got a leak and that leak was to burst or pop or you know suddenly get worse at the time when you need your brakes it could be game over so make sure you're checking your fluid level make sure it's in between your minimum and maximum markers and likewise check your royal check your coolant while you're there just for good maintenance so that's everything i have on you know what to do as a normal human being to check that your cars you know gonna go for an mot the best that you can just for looking at things just for having a quick scan over your car these are all little things that you can do at home just to make sure that you know your cars aren't going to fail for something stupid or you're not going to get charged through the nose for something like a bulb or some wiper blades that need replacing and you can do them obviously before you go to the mot test station and, and do all these things before you go and get your mot done so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching i hope you found this video informative and if if you did if you found it useful then please as i said before please share the video give it a thumbs up please subscribe if you haven't done so already and i'll catch you in the next one bye for now